Hey everybody, welcome to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, visionrecordingstudios.com, and here on my YouTube channel. And this week we're taking a look at another Universal Audio plugin. This week we're going to take a look at the Pultec Passive EQ Collection, which is a three-part plugin or three different EQs in this plugin when you purchase it for Universal Audio. Uh, the three in front of you are the EQP-1A, which is probably the more popular of the three, the one you probably see the most used. Um, the MEQ-5, which is a mid-range um, focused type of an EQ, and then also the HLF-3C, which is a high cut and a low cut uh, filtering EQ. Okay, so we're going to take a look at those three today. We're going to take a look at some sound examples <clears throat> of it in the DAW and just show you how I kind of use it and give you a couple of examples on where you can use it. Um, the thing about this uh, collection is that um, the uh, Pultec is probably one of the most famous hardware EQs ever uh, built. And the reason for that is because it is, it is a tube-based EQ, which has a very smooth and silky sound, and we'll get into that in a second. So as always, I like to do a little history lesson and a couple of facts about the uh, Universal Audio plugins. This one's a short one. Um, so let's just talk, take a quick look at this. So developed by Ole Summerlin and Gene Schrank in 1951 is when the Pultec uh, EQ, EQP1A was, uh, was developed. It is a three-band, tube-amplified EQ, again, meaning that it has um, it's amplified by tubes, um, not solid state, and that's what gives it that very silky, smooth sound, even when you're boosting high amounts of gain or, or high amounts of frequency boosting. It really always sounds smooth, never sounds muddy or shrilly. And it's really hard to make anything sound bad. You can put a Pultec on just about anything and it sounds good. So if you want something, you have a, a, an, an instrument or a vocal that sounds a little harsh or something that sounds a little bit ear piercing, you put a, a Pultec on it, it instantly smooths it out. It makes it sound sweet and smooth and kind of silky. Um, and that's why the Pultecs are so famous because you could put it on anything and it's really uh, a challenge to make anything not sound good going through a Pultec. Um, so that's one of the reasons why it is so widely popular in its hardware form and now so much so in plug-in form. And here are the three um, EQs we're going to look at today. <clears throat> I'm going to walk you through the controls quickly on these before we get into the DAW. They're quite simple, but just so we have a, a close-up look at it. So on the top here, we have the EQ uh, P1A. Uh, let me see if I can get my... Let me just... Uh, exit this so I can get my cursor up here so I can walk you through. So, and I will try to zoom up on this in the edit section of this so you can look here. But on the EQP, on the EQP-1A, <clears throat> we have three sets of controls, three banks of controls. So let's start with this toggle switch. So the toggle switch, the on and off toggle here, that is um, to turn the EQ section on and off. So when you, um, it, it, when you turn, when you when you have this in the down position, all you're listening to is the actual is is the input in, uh, the I O the uh, in and output transformers. Um, so one thing Universal Audio did when they modeled this EQ is they not only modeled the sound of the tubes in the EQ frequency section, but also the I O. <clears throat> so you're getting the the input and the output, the transformers. You're getting that coloration, that harmonic distortion, that analog kind of vibe. So by turning the toggle switch in its down position, that just bypasses the EQ section, but you're still getting the signal of the actual uh, of the actual uh, transformers. Okay, when it's in the up position, you're getting the EQ is turned on. So think of it as just the it's just the EQ section is the bypass. Then to the right of that, you have three sets of knobs. Here you have a boost and an attenuation knob, and these two knobs work in conjunction with the low frequency selector switch. So you have, this is a stepped selector switch. You have 20 hertz, 30 hertz, 60 hertz, 100 hertz. And by, by selecting which you want, you, you can turn up and boost or atten and or attenuate, okay? Now the, the, one, the one unique thing about the Pultec is that you're able to boost and attenuate the low frequency at the same time. So in other words, you can have it set to where it's set here at 30 hertz and you can boost 30 hertz. And then you can also attenuate it and you say, well, how can that be? And the one thing that makes the, the Pultec unique in a way a lot of engineers use this is in the lower frequencies, you get, some, you get a, a unique kind of a tightness and a focus on the low frequencies when you boost a little and then you attenuate at the same time. It does something kind of funky to the EQ curve, which I can demonstrate it on the screen, but it can't obviously. Um, but it kind of tightens and focuses the low end, it never sounds money. So it is something, that is one of the things about this EQ that a lot of engineers do, and the only EQ that's, that I know of that, that allows you to boost and cut the frequency at the same time. It kind of gives a focus to the low end. So that's something you definitely want to play around with. 
in the center section here, you have this bandwidth, and this bandwidth is a, is a Q adjustment, okay? So you have a sharp Q all the way down at zero or a broad Q all the way over at number 10. And that, and that bandwidth knob works with the boost and the high frequency selector. So it's the three, these three dials here, the, the bandwidth, the boost, and the high frequency. The high frequency selector is at 3K, 4K, 5K, 8, 10, 12, 16K, okay? So you can only boost the high frequencies. You can't attenuate. The attenuation dial works with the, attenuations, the uh, attenuation selector. So you can attenuate three fixed uh, higher frequencies, 5, 10, and 20K. So this attenuation knob works with this uh, selector. It doesn't work with this, the high frequency like it does on the low end, so keep that in mind. That's one thing that's confusing about this. When you first look at this, you would think that this high frequency selector works with the boost and attenuate just like the low frequency, but it doesn't. And then lastly, you have an on-off LED here, kind of a switch, <clears throat> where when you turn this off, this bypasses the entire unit, not only the EQ section, as well as the input-output transformers, okay? Unlike the toggle, which just does the EQ section. We move down to the uh, to the MEQ-5. This is more of a mid-range um, frequency EQ, okay? So again, we have the toggle, which is the same thing as it does in the EQP1A. It just bypasses the EQ section, but you're still getting the coloration of the transformers, the in and output transformers. We have a peak section of 200 hertz through 1,000 hertz, okay, with a peak um, uh, dial here, increased dial. We have a dip or a cut in the middle here uh, from 200 hertz to 7K. We can, we can cut any one of those frequencies. And then we also have another peak on the higher frequencies from 1, uh, 1.5K to 5K, okay? And then again, we have the on-off LED with a little selector switch here. This will bypass the entire unit. So the toggle switch and this and this dial here, the on-off, will um, work the same way it does on the EQ in the on the EQP1A. Okay. And then lastly, we have the MLF-3C, which is a high cut, low cut. Now, what's a little different about this toggle switch is this this will act as as a bypass. This toggle switch acts like this on and off dial to the right hand side here of the of the other two eqs okay and the reason for that is you can see we don't have one of those little switches down here because these two eqs the the mid-range and the and the and the and the uh eq eq p1a is more uh, has an is, is an amplified eq the tubes amplify it um and so that's why you have an on off here and also a total bypass we're here this is not an amplified high cut low cut okay so this is just a just acts just as a bypass so we have a low cut filter Okay, from 50 hertz to 2,000 hertz, and a high cut from 1.5 to 15K, okay? So that's the controls and how they work with the, um, with the three uh, Pultec EQs here. So now let's take a look and jump into the DAW, and we will take a look at some sound examples and how um, you may want to use some of these EQs. Okay, here we are back in our DAW. So let's take a look at the way the pull tech could be used on a couple of different sound examples here. So these tracks are not mixed, completely raw, no other processing, completely raw recorded tracks. And I'm just bringing in the pull tech on a few of these tracks. So you can hear what the pull tech does to the track in it in its raw state, okay? Normally you would do some filtering, you do some cleanup and maybe some compression before I would use a pull tech in a real mix, but I don't wanna, I wanna show it to you in a way that um, is at its rawest form. So let's start out on, let's just say, a kick drum. Okay, let's just see where we would use this on a kick drum. So here we're going to use EQ P-1A, okay? And let's turn it off completely. We'll turn off the, the entire EQ, the transformers and everything. And what we're going to do here, let's just play this uh, back a little. Maybe we'll turn off the vocal first. We're going to look at it on vocals as well. I'll try to turn this up a little so you can hear it. Okay, so let's uh, let's turn this on here. You can already hear what the what the what the EQ is doing. So uh, one thing, let's take a look at this. So it's 60 hertz. If you wanted to get a little bit of that low end thump to uh, to the kick drum, you can always boost up at 60 hertz. So if we go ahead and we, I'm going to turn down the 5K. Okay, you can do a little bit of a boost. You can see how much low end you can get from this. Right. And like I said, you can use your attenuation as well to kind of focus it. I'm going to loop. 
loop around. Okay, hear the very low, low end as I bring up the attenuation. See how it kind of cleans up that low end, but still retains the punch. Now, if I just bypass this completely, I'll shut it off. Now, we're not doing anything on the high end yet. If I turn it off. Here, it kind of tightens up that low end. Now let's bring up a little bit of click. Let's do a little bit of 5K here. We're gonna use the uh, the bra the uh, the bandwidth. We're gonna do like a medium Q here, maybe five or six. Now we got some of that snare bleed going on in there, but just to show you what it can do. So even cranked all the way up, it doesn't sound harsh or shrilly. Four K. Okay, now we're going to bypass the the whole unit again. So that's before. It's after. So you can hear how it just takes that kick drum, tightens up the low end, brings a little bit of click in. We got some snare bleed going on in there, but I'm, I'm exaggerating this a little bit so you can hear it. But you can hear how smooth it sounds. It just sounds natural and nice. It doesn't have like that typical, like, oh, you can tell it's really boosted and EQ'd. I mean, we're boosting this quite a bit, and it just sounds natural. It's very musical is the word. It's a beautiful, beautiful EQ for something like this. So now if we were to just bypass just the EQ section, but still listening to the transformers, and the, we would turn the toggle in and out. So let's start with that off. And it's going to be subtle here, especially on just a kick drum. Now the EQ is, is off here. So if I turn off the whole unit and bypass the transformers, you can hear a little bit of harmonic distortion there. Hear it? Now bring the EQ in. And if you think that's too much click, you can just dial it back. So that is on a kick drum, EQ P, EQ P 1A. So let's, uh, let's shut that off. Let's go to a snare. So another place where I would use this an awful lot. I don't, I use this almost all the time on snares. <clears throat> so let's start with turning down the boost. Maybe around that 100 hertz to bring in a little bit of beef to the snare. Let's see what that sounds like. Should unmute the track, right? Okay, with nothing boosted and nothing cut, just l listen to what happens when I turn on the unit. Instantly, you can start to hear the EQ doing its thing. Let's boost a little bit. Too much, obviously. See how I can do the attenuation at the same time? Let's bypass this, just bypass the EQ. It's before. After. A little too much. Let's bring in a little bit of 5K here. Kind of a, kind of a, again, a medium cue. Okay, let's bypass the EQ. We'll bypass the entire unit here, transformers and all. That's before. Again, very musical. 
And again, I would never do this in solo. I would do this in the context of a mix, obviously, but I want to show you what the EQ sounds like. And we'll listen to it across an entire stereo mix bus in a few minutes. But I want to just kind of give you a feel for what it does to an individual instrument. So once again, in the off position on the snare. So that's the snare. So again, very musical, nice way to bring out a lot of crack in the snare, but not to get too harsh. And again, you want to be careful because we got some hi-hat bleed and some cymbal bleed on this in particular track. But again, it opens up the sound wide open, very smooth, very musical EQ for sure. Now let's try it on a pair of overheads for a minute. And let's take a look at the, uh, the high cut and low cut filters. Okay, so we have a pair of overheads here. Let's bypass it completely. Start with it off. And we're gonna kick it in here. So if you don't want to get the kick drum in there, you just want to get the snare. You can pull the snare out or the kick out of there. Depending on what you're going for. You can use the high cut filter. Usually on overheads, you want to go at least to 15K. I might bypass this. Listen to the low end, the kick. Now, if you feel like you're losing too much of the snare, you can go back to 100 hertz or even 80 hertz. Get rid of the kick in that. So that is the uh, the HLF dash three C again. It's just a high pass, low pass filter. Really nice. Um, again, musical, not harsh. Um, I don't use this particular part of the plugin collection very often. Um, I tend to use my filters on my channel strips or some other uh, type of EQ. But again, I've used this from time to time on things. Um, and it's, it sounds great. It's just a nice little utility uh, EQ to have. Okay, now let's take a listen to maybe, uh, let's see. We could even take a look at the uh, MEQ5 on some bass just to see what we can do there. Turn this up a little. Okay, so we bypass the EQ altogether. Okay, boosting up around 700 to bring some of the finger out a little bit. Before. Okay, it opens it up nice. <clears throat> So again, here you have a peak section here, 200 to 1,000, uh, uh, 200 hertz to 1,000, or 1K, I'm sorry. Uh, you have the peak here. These two knobs were at the selector switch and this boost knob. You have a dipping, um, a cut <clears throat> from 200 to 7K um, where you can dip out, and then you have another peak from 1.5K to 5K. So we wanted to maybe cut out some of that, some of the low two. Hear what it does around 200. And you can peak up a little bit too, maybe around 1.5K. Depending on how much of the fingers you want to come out. It's before. Okay, so that's the MEQ-5. Again, just a mid-range EQ. Really good on distorted electric guitars, too. I don't have any in this track, like, uh, you know, distorted heavy rock guitars. This is a great uh, EQ to use. <clears throat> really brings out some nice uh, some nice tones there. So, again, just a mid-range EQ. Very simple. But, again, very musical. 
And then lastly, let's take a listen to this on a, on a lead vocal, just to, just to hear what that kind of sounds like. So again, we could start with the uh, high cut and the low cut. And then we could follow that up with an EQ P1A. So we'll bypass this, bypass this. Should uh, probably unmute the vocal, that would be helpful. The one that feels like fucking up inside. I wish there was some an empty hall. So let's kick on the filtering. Here comes that dark and awful feeling within. The one that feels like fucking up inside. So just rolling off some low ends. I wish there was some way to start this over again. And then put on the uh, Maybe the EQ make another P1A. Kind of life. So on the EQ P1A, let's go ahead and let's. Okay, we'll uh, we'll 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 leave the low frequency alone. So we're cutting off around 150. So we're not going to touch that, but we're going to put a, get a little bit of air here. So we're going to get a pretty broad cue here, maybe around 12k. Just to start, start there and kind of roll that up and see what we get. On an empty hall. Here comes that dark and awful feeling within. The one that feels like fucking Before. up inside. I wish there was some way to After. start this over again. Maybe make another better kind of life. So on vocals, it's great, especially female vocals. It just adds a little air at the top, but it doesn't sound brittle. No matter how much you boost this, it, that voice will never sound harsh. On an empty hall. It's boosted all the way. Before. Here comes that dark and awful feeling within. The one that feels like fucking up inside. Man, it sounds gorgeous. Doesn't you do you boost like that on a regular stock EQ or any other EQ at 12k and you're gonna get that real tss, tss, that real harshness. This just sounds very, very musical. So all we're doing here is rolling off around 150 <clears throat> and around 15k and just boosting at 12k quite a bit here. And listen to the difference if we just bypass everything. I wish there was some way to start this over again. Maybe make another better kind of life. So that's what it does on a lead vocal. So again, extremely musical. Now let's just take a look quickly at a full mix and show you how I use this EQ an awful lot. And a lot of engineers do as well. <clears throat> Where on a mix bus, this is a full mix. Okay. Turn this down a little so it doesn't bleed you guys. Not you just pay attention to your monitors. This is a full mix now. Okay, so I'm using tons of processing as you can see. And the very last thing I put in my, my mix bus is I'll put this EQ P1A on here. And what you'll see is that I'm not boosting or attenuating anything. I think I'm attenuating a little bit of 20 hertz to get rid of some of the rumble. Um, but if I turn the EQ off and turn it on, listen what it does to a full mix. It just kind of opens up the sound just a little bit. So I'm going to play this back with nothing on and I'll toggle it on and off so you can kind of hear it. Listen to the hi-hats. I don't know if you guys were able to hear me there. Listen to the hi-hats, listen to the acoustic guitar, how when I turn it on, it just kind of opens the sound a little bit. Again, there's no boosting being done here at all. The only thing that's being done is a little attenuation at 20 hertz to roll off the little bit of low end rumble. Now there's a little bit of an inherent amplified boost when you turn this EQ on, even at a no boost state, quote unquote. I think it's about one dB if the manual serves me, memory serves me correctly. So don't really listen to it getting loud. Listen to how the sound just opens up. Bypass. 
Listen to how that vocal pulls up and forward. It just gives it that little special something. I use this an awful lot on the mix bus like this, and I use this a lot in mastering. A lot of mastering engineers will use this as well, or a lot of times you're just doing a touch of any EQing with this Poltec, but they're really using it for the coloration of what the EQ does, and that's the beauty of the hardware and the beauty of what Universal Audio has done when they emulated these this product, was it's not just the EQ section, it's the total harmonic distortion and the sweetness and the vibe that you get when you run signal through a piece of analog gear. It just does something to the sound. Uh, you know, and that's the, again, we talk about this on the YouTube channel all the time when we look at these vintage plugins. You know, it's not just that it's an EQ. It's more than that. Yes, it's a very musical EQ, but when you're running it through the tube section and the transformer section of this product, without even boosting or cutting anything, you get an inherent sweetness and smoothness and vibiness to it that kind of opens things up and gives a lot more separation and clarity. That's the magic with an EQ like this that you don't get from a stock EQ or a lot of EQs. So now if you don't have universal audio and you want and you don't, you know, you can't, um, you don't have the budget to invest in a universal audio system, you can always get Waves makes a native version of this the, um, the called the Puig Tech, which is part of the Jack Joseph Pre Puig collection where they modeled, Waves modeled one of his personal um, pull techs. Again, a little different sounding than this particular Poltec because no two pieces of old analog hardware sound the same, but it still will give you this kind of a sound, and you can buy that natively. Um, and I highly recommend the Waves Jack Joseph Puig collection if you don't have a universal audio system. However, uh, the universal audio system I like a lot better because not only are you getting wonderful plugins and I think better emulations, but you're also getting the benefit of using uh, the DSP power um, of the universal audio hardware where it's not taxing your CPU. Um, so anyhow, so again, one more time on, on this, on this mix bus, I'm just going to turn it off and turn it on a couple of times. So that is the Universal Audio Passive Pultec EQ Collection. I hope this uh, video was helpful and informative. If you don't have the Pultec Collection um, and you ha are, are a Universal Audio owner, you should get this upgrade. Um, they have the Legacy version, which I believe comes with all the Universal Audio cards, at least as the making of this video. The difference between the Legacy version, as it's known, and the new collection, which the new um, three-piece collection is the Legacy version, because it was made back in the days of the UAD-1, where DSP technology wasn't what it is today, you just got the EQ section modeled. You didn't get the, in, the input and output transformers modeled. Um, so although it's still a wonderful EQ, and I used it for years before this collection came out, the new collection is definitely worth the upgrade of 100 bucks or 150 bucks or whatever it costs these days because you're getting that, you're getting that extra benefit of the modeling of the input and the output transformers, which you don't get from the legacy version. Okay, we didn't take a look at the legacy version today, but you can check it out on their website. So for, for more uh, home recording, mixing tips, mastering tips, training, techniques, concepts, so on and so forth, head over to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And if you want to know more about my mixing and mastering services, you can head over to visionrecordingstudios.com. And until next time, this is David Vignola from homerecordingmadeeasy.com, and I will talk to you guys all soon. Take care.